In one of our previous videos on LAAT gunship pilots, we mentioned that while LAAT gunships were best utilized in a planet's atmosphere, they were also capable of traveling through space as they were designed to be deployed onto a planet from space. As they were such effective troop transport craft, these gunships were also, from time to time, used as boarding craft and you may even have piloted one into a separatist cruise yourself in the classic Star Wars Battlefront 2 video game. Though, in the hands of a clone and not an earthling with a PS2 controller, just how effective were LAAT gunships at boarding enemy ships? We'll be discussing just that in today's video, so ready your blaster and kiss your fellow clones goodbye. Attention, Sergeant on deck! To understand just how effective LAAT gunships were at boarding enemy ships, it helps to know a thing or two about other, more specified boarding craft and other methods of boarding. Colocoid Creation Nest's Drock class boarding ship, known also as a pod hunter or reducer, was of a very specific design. It launched itself into the hull of an enemy ship, piercing it with four giant pincers close together to form a single spike. Once inside the hull, the four pincers would separate, tearing the hull a little more, allowing up to six battle droids to descend into the target's interior. While lightly armed, the Drock wasn't really designed for ship-to-ship -ship combat or anything, though its pincers could be used to pinch and crush certain targets. The Imperial Drill Pod boarding craft operated very much like the Drock, though instead of four separable pincers, it breached hulls using a giant drill made of four separable durasteel plates. This craft was also able to deposit up to 10 units into an enemy ship, though it was completely unarmed. Rendili Star Drive's Catan class boarding shuttle was a fair bit longer than the Droch and Imperial drill pod, though it required a crew of three and it could carry up to 50 units. The Catan's nose was tough, allowing it to smash into enemy ships, and once it had jammed itself in, plasma torches cut their way into the target's hull, and the front of the Catan opened up inside the target. An airlock in the nose of this craft made such operations a whole lot safer, and entry took less than two minutes. The front of the Catan also bore a double laser cannon, but again, this craft was not designed for ship-to-ship -ship combat. The Sabretooth class assault slash rescue vessel was a multi-purpose craft like the LAAT, though the Sabretooth was far more conspicuous. On the underside of its nose, the Sabretooth brandished two reinforced flexible grapple teeth, which allowed it to latch itself onto a target, very much like the extinct beast after which it was named. Units were then injected through the teeth and into the target's insides. Alternatively, the teeth could be used as anchor points to maneuver an enemy or friendly target, and they could also be detached if the saber tooth needed to make a quick escape. This craft was heavily armored, and it also boasted a decent array of weapons. It was also 100 times larger than the previous boarding craft we've mentioned, crewed by 800 and capable of taking 300 passengers. The Spiral class assault ship was literally unarmed and literally disposable. It was shaped like a needle and it used an advanced stealth suit to sneak up on its prey before launching itself straight for it. To get past any particle shields, the spiral could detonate a proton charge just in front of itself, weakening the shield and allowing itself to pass through. The nose cone of the spiral, born of a substance called teconite, would vaporize as it struck the target's hull, absorbing much of the impact and allowing the spiral's vac suited crew to survive and enter the target. It was a relatively small craft, capable of carrying around six passengers and a bit of cargo. CNR Fleet Systems TIE slash BR boarding shuttle was a variant of the TIE slash SA bomber featuring clamps and a hull cutter. With these tools, the TIE slash BR could grasp the hull of an enemy ship and cut into it with lasers, allowing for around 12 troops to climb on through. The TIE shuttles were capable of landing in a ship's hangar deck, like LAAT gunships or floating troops via a standard ramp, and the vessel also featured a drop lift ladder for daring extractions. In terms of firepower, this TIE variant had a rear laser cannon, but that was about it. So those were just 7 examples of boarding craft other than the LAAT gunship, though what about some of the other methods of boarding? Undoubtedly, the best one is this. 
These Daredevils were clone marines, elite units which undertook boarding operations and contested enemy boarding operations. They didn't always use Mandalorian-esque jetpacks, but freak yeah, this sort of thing did happen. So what did all these boarding craft and boarding methods have in common? Well, they were all specifically designed to breach a target's hulls, not simply cruise into their hangars. As for the LAAT gunship, cruising on in was the only way. Now, landing in an enemy hangar shouldn't have been an easy thing to do, and in most cases, it wasn't. Firstly, any good hangar had some kind of shield protecting it from the vacuum of space, dangerous projectiles, and enemy craft. But there were different sorts of shields. Magnetic shields were common, though these mostly prevented gases from passing through, and most boarding craft could just fly through them. Static force fields were used too. These were basically windows which needed to be deactivated before anything could pass through, though these types of shield also required the hangar to be cleared of anything which needed to breathe before they could be deactivated. Any good hangar also featured other forms of defense, such as turrets, infantry, blast shields and emergency airlocks, and hangars with automated defense systems, alone or better yet, coupled with manual defense systems. Lastly, the best hangar defense was not having a hangar at all, as was the case with some separatist ships, such as the Munificent Class Star Frigate and the Recusent Class Light Destroyer. So where does this leave the LAAT gunship? While LAAT gunships had atmospheric pressure containment shields which allowed them to fly in the vacuum of space, and while they were, from time to time, used for boarding missions in space, they were not designed to be boarding craft specifically. Plain and simple, LAAT gunships could not do what most good specified boarding craft could do, breach a target's hull. And the reason why most boarding craft were designed to do this was likely because cruising into a hostile hangar should have been suicide. So this leaves the LAAT gunships in a very, very limited niche. They could only cruise on into hangars with magnetic shields and straight up terrible defenses, and they were absolutely useless against ships which didn't have a hangar. Notice how in this video, there are no hangar defenses. Instead, the droids are crowded deeper into the ship, allowing just about any earthling with a PS2 controller to cruise the hell on in. To finish off, the LAAT gunship was a bit of a jack of all trades, and if it was the master of anything, it certainly wasn't boarding enemy ships. But what do you think? Can you think of any other ways LAAT gunships could be used as boarding craft? Can you think of any specific examples of LAAT gunships cruising on into a hostile hangar? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, as per usual, make sure you check out the description where you can join our Gitsley's Gaming Network and play games with other Star Wars fans such as yourself on our Grace Mod and our Roblox, our main Gitsley's Discord server where you can chat with other like-minded Star Wars fans and myself, and if you want to help support the channel, please do check out the Patreon. If you do decide to donate, you get access to a special behind-the-scenes Discord where you can see how myself and my team work. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.